Mr. Ramesh Kanal sir, all the delegates present here, my dear students, ladies and gentlemen. So today I am going to present on the topic that is the multi-drop resistance and the extended spectrum of eta lactamase producing the gram negative uh, producing gram negative bacteria from the chicken meat in Bharatpur metropolitan Nepal. So let's introduce first. So first is the antibiotic resistance. So you are very familiar with the antibiotic resistance. So it is the conditions when an antibiotics doesn't uh, doesn't work on a particular bacteria. So the problem arises when there is the multi-drop resistance. So if you can see the word multi-drop resistance. So this word signifies that when uh, when two or more than sorry three or more than three vector antibiotics doesn't work on the bacteria, that condition is known as the multi-drop resistance. And I have added the next uh, topic here that is the of the third generation cephalosporin. So third generation cephalosporins are the antibiotic that is usually given by the physicians. Some of the common examples of the third generation cephalosporin are the cefotaxin, cefcazidin, cefixim, ceftriozone. So these antibiotics are particularly given or particularly given by the physicians. But what actually happens is that there is the bacteria which are capable of producing the extended spectrum of beta lactamase. So these enzymes will hydrolyze the beta lactam ring that is present on the antibiotics. So if the beta lactam rings are broken down, the antibiotics will change from one product to the another. It means from one substrate to the another product, the antibiotic will be changed. So the antibiotics will be no longer the antibiotics and the antibiotics won't work. So actually the extended spectrum beta lactamase is the enzyme and extended spectrum beta lactam is the antibiotic which is called the third generation cephalosporin. So next what I am going to relate is that I am going to relate the MDR and the ESPL with the meat sample, the chicken meat sample that we consume daily which is uh, very cheap and which is very popular among the people. So if you see, the infections by the bacteria leads to the difficulties in the treatment. So prolong the infection, if the infections are prolonged there is the huge economic loss Similarly, the treatment can be failed and the persons can be dead. If the infections by such bacteria occurs, then there may be the failure of the treatment and the patients may die. So, what is the cause of the MDR and the ESPL? So, what may be the cause? The one cause is the overuse of the antibiotics in the poultry. So, from the day one to until it is sold in the market, the farmers use the antibiotics. So, the overuse of the antibiotics in the poultry is one of the major problems for the emerging multi drug resistance. So, so, the next is the poor sanitation in the slaughterhouse. So whenever that chicken goes into the market, goes into the slaughterhouse, then the butcher won't do any of the hygienic method to process the meat. It means the water they use for the processing of the meat is not of the good quality. That may contain the various type of the bacteria which are harmful to the humans. So that is one of the reasons in which there will be the bacteria in the meat. So if the bacteria, so these bacteria can be transmitted to the humans from the animals. So you can see the bacteria are transmitted to the humans from animals through the consumption of the uncooked foods. So the one of the meat that is very famous in the Newari culture is the kachila. So that is the that is the uncooked meat. So that is also you know that that traditions was from the bulk meat, but now that has been modified to the chicken too. So if we consume such type of the uncooked meats, then the patient may suffer. So next is if we contact with the uncooked meat and meat surfaces, the patient may be infected with the MDR and ESPL. So what are my objectives? So my objectives was to determine the prevalence of ESPL producing uh, multi drug resistance gram negative isolates from chicken meat in the Bharatpur metropolitan city. The specific objectives was to isolate and identify the bacteria from the chicken meat to perform the antibiotic susceptibility test of the isolated organism, to determine the prevalence of multi-drop resistance isolates, to determine the prevalence of extended spectrum beta lactamase producing multi-drop resistance isolates. So these were some of my objectives. Uh, so these are the objectives in which I initiated my research. And the sample site was obviously the Bharatpur metropolitan city. 
So a total of 38 uh, chicken meat samples were collected and the random and non-repeated chicken samples were taken in this study and about the 15 gram of the chicken samples were taken, 5 from the thigh, 5 from the breast and 5 from the wings. So this was, you know, uh, this was collected from the slaughterhouse and this was transported aseptically to the microbiology laboratory of the Balkumari College. So this is the flow chart of my research. So I collect the chicken sample, I put the chicken sample into the pepton water for 30 minutes, then after I transferred 1 ml of the pepton water into the Newton broth and then after the selenite air broth. So then after, after the 24 hours of incubations in the Newton broth and the selenite air broth, I strip the, I strip, uh, the bacteria from the Newton broth to the McGonkey agar as well as to the Amindo agar and from the selenite air broth, I strip the bacteria into the Salmonella and Cisel agar and incubate it for 24 hours. Then after I observe the uh, growth of the bacteria, after the observations of growth, the bacteria was inoculated into the Newton agar to obtain a pure colony. So then after I did the biochemical test for the identifications of the bacteria, then after I did the antibiotic susceptibility test, I screen whether the anti whether the bacteria or ESP produce or not, and then after I confirm confirm with whether the bacteria is extended spectrum of beta lactamase producers or not. So these were some of my methodology that I followed in the research. So what I got actually from the sam uh, from the research is that I separated the two types of sanitations. One was the good sanitations, and was the and next was the poor sanitations on the basis of the questionnaires. So that was the washing of the slaughterhouse, washing of the apron, washing of the hand sanitizer, washing of chopping boards, sold meat conditions. These were some of the factors that determined the sanitation condition. So if you can see from the poor sanitations, the from each from uh, if you see the poor sanitations, uh, about 20 uh, samples from the poor sanitations have the three bacteria. It means from the good sanitation only one bacteria or only two bacteria have been isolated from but from the bad sanitations three or four bacteria has been isolated so the major prevalence uh, was from the poor sanitation. So next we can see the distributions of the bacteria. So among them, Cytobacter was the most prevalent bacteria in the meat sample that was followed by the, uh, sorry, Cytobacter was one of the most prevalent bacteria that was followed by the Salmonella and Proteus. So this is uh, the isolations of E. coli from the chicken meat sample. So this is the bacterial colony. So then after we did the antibiotic susceptibility test. So the antibiotic susceptibility patterns are being often here. So you can see the imipenem. So imipenem is the second line of drugs. So whenever the case are very complicated, so doctor will prescribe the imipenem, which is given intravenously. So if you see, in the cytobacter, about 32.6% of the bacteria were imipenem resistant. So you can imagine, if this type of the bacteria has been inoculated into the humans, so what will be the case? So, so similarly, if you see the salmonella, the salmonella are resistance to the ampicillin. So no any salmonella can be treated by the ampicillin. So similarly, if we can see, the salmonella can also not be treated by the tetracycline because you can see the high uh, prevalence of antibiotic resistance in the tetracycline. So similarly, is the neutrophorantin in the salmonella. So if you see the proteus here, the proteus, so from the imipenum, you can see uh, the proteus species are uh, more resistant to the imipenum. So about 25.4% of the proteus species are resistant to the imipenum. So this is the, how we did the antibiotic susceptibility test. So then after we, de we uh, determine the multi-drug resistance. So from the cytobacter, we have uh, we have, you know, uh, uh, we have obtained 78.3 percent of the multi-drug resistance isolates. In the in the Salmonella, we have obtained about 85.2 percent of the multi-drug resistance isolates. 
and in the protease we have isolated about 73.7% uh, of the multi drug resistance isolates. So what we did is that I also uh, checked whether that multi drug is re resistance is related to the sanitations or not, but that was not related because from our research what we concluded that the sanitations and multi drug resistance these are the two different things that cannot be related. So that was not the significant. So similarly, I also checked for the ESBL producers. So from this data, what we obtained is that so salmonella was uh, salmonella percentage was high. About 55.6 percent of the salmonella were the ESBL producers. So again, I correlate this one with the with the ESBL produ ESBL producer with the sanit uh, sanitations. So this was also not significant. It means ESPL producers are not related to the sanitations. So, so if you see, this is the figure in which I have done the antibiotic susceptibility test. So you can see this one antibiotics. So this is not working. So there is a two types of the antibiotics. So this follows the combined Dix method. So if you see here, so this bacteria, so this antibiotics and this antibiotics. So if you present here, so the zone of inhibitions is greater in this context. So this is only the cefotaxime and this is the cefotaxime plus clavulinic acid. So if you see, if we add the clavulinic acid in the antibiotics, the zone of inhibitions will be high. So what does this significant is that the clavulinic acid will inhibit the ESBL. So it means the clavulinic acid will inhibit the standard spectrum beta lactamase enzymes and the antibiotics are able to work properly. I repeat, so the clavulinic acid I have used here. So this is the cefotaxime and this is the cefotaxime plus clavulinic acid. So this cefotaxime is alone, not capable of inhibiting the bacteria. So if I use the cefotaxime plus clavulinic acid, this clavulinic acid will inhibit or that will hydrolyze, that will inhibit the uh, ESBL or the extended spectrum beta lactamase enzymes and now the antibiotics are able to properly inhibit the bacteria. So next, the final objective of my study was to determine the ESPL producer among the MDR. So I have, this, I have uh, detected the MDR separately, I have detected the ESPL separately. So now my next target is that how many ESPL are produced among the MDR. So about 34.9% were the ESPL producers as well as the MDR bacteria. It means for 34.9% of the bacteria isolated from the meat sample will be resistant towards three or more than three types of the drugs along with the third generation cephalosporin like the cefixime, cefotaxime, septazidine, septriazone. So, so what I concluded is that this study showed the high prevalence of the MDR and ESBL producers gram-negative uh, bacterial resistance in the chicken meat. The frequency of the gram-negative bacteria as EMDR and ESBL producers are elevating globally and this is one of the major problem. So next, the prevalence of the multi-drug resistance ESBL producing gram-negative isolates present in the chicken meat is about 34.9%. So in this study, there was no significant between the sanitations on MDR bacteria and ASBL, ASBL producing bacteria because we are unable to assess the quality of water used for washing purposes and the sanitation conditions of the site where the birds were undressed and eviscerated. So we are unable to assess this one. So, there, so that may be the reason of insignificance. So what I recommend is that antibiotic resistance is the worldwide problem and is transmitted from animal sources to the humans. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. I will. I will soon in it. So okay, antibiotic resistance is the worldwide problem and it is transmitted uh, from animal sources to the human, is increasing tremendously. 
So both EMDR and ESL incidents are considered as the extreme uh, public health issues. This problem is more troublesome to the developing countries like Nepal, where the facilities for the health care, uh, surveillance for the antibiotic medications, and facilities to detect EMDR and ESPLs are poorly developed. So antibiotic susceptibility tests will be carried out in order to prescribe the appropriate and accurate treatment of the infection. Abuse of the antibiotics in the animal feed and food, any, food animals, food animals must be stopped and must be used under the veterinary supervision. So proper sanitation matter must be applied for this slaughterhouse. So I acknowledge uh, Mr. Siva Prasad Powdell, the principal of Balkumari College, Mr. Anupuni Bhajachare, our program in charge, Department of uh, Microbiology. Similarly, Mr. Dhiraj Kumar Saudari is the PhD scholar of Kauni University, South Korea. Similarly, I will acknowledge my students, Hemra Subedi, Raju Shah, Sachin Kavli, Saru Sarma, and Sunil Nirvani, who are engaged in that research. And similarly, my family and friends. Thank you. Thank you so much.